What's up everybody, it's Ty the Bourbon Guy and welcome back to another Whiskey Haul. Today, we're gonna cover the bottles that I've recently acquired, let's just say, <laughs> purchased. I don't think any of these ones are sent to me, uh, but bottles that I've gotten over the past few weeks, I haven't really gotten a chance to make as many of these videos. Any further ado. <laughs> Bardstown Discovery Series number 11. Now this one has been one that people seem to really enjoy. It's an all Kentucky blend. And I just, I'm always going to go back to Discovery Series. Number three has been my absolute favorite. Number four was one that was also really good. And I think ever since then, it's been hard for me to get on board with it. I think that they're still very good, but again, at these price points, they have to be better than just good, right? So five I thought was just not really as balanced. Six and seven weren't bad, but I think they're just kind of going in different directions, right? So it just, None of it's bad whiskey. Let's just start there, right? Uh, but again, it's just more of a preference thing for myself. I haven't got a chance to try 10, but I've heard that 10 kind of got back on track. They actually rebranded. And I love the fact that they have this brand on the front now. They have the number on the front. They have the different colors. So 10 was red. This is more of like a purple blue. Um, but I like that because on a shelf, I can see it. So before they had just a, a, well actually first they had the green label, but then they switched to a red and I had to turn it to the side to see what number it is and the stores that I typically go to, bar sounds up pretty high and so, you know, to ask somebody to get a ladder and check the number, it's this whole thing, right? <laughs> and so for me to easily identify this by just looking at the color and knowing right away which one this is, I really like that approach. But this one, people seem to really enjoy and so I got a chance to sample it. I thought it was good enough for me to buy the bottle but, you know, with any bottle that's overhyped or hyped in general, I just am always skeptical. <laughs> is this actually that good? Or do people just really, really love the name on the front and we're just gonna roll with it? We'll see, we'll see. I think that probably could speak to almost every bottle on this, <laughs> on this haul today, but we'll go from there. All right, the next one up is Jefferson's Tropics Aged in Humidity. So some people, Love Jefferson's. Some people don't really care for it because they feel like it's kind of gimmicky. I personally feel like with all the experimenting that's going on and all the creativity that's going on right now in whiskey, Jefferson's was almost ahead of the game in doing this beforehand, right? So whether you're a fan of Oceans or not, for them to decide to put barrels on a ship and sail it across the equator however many times and... Yes, it may feel gimmicky, but again, the creativity and trying to figure out what this really does to the whiskey and the impacts, I think that they were ahead of the game, really. And I don't know I, that a lot of people would like me saying that, but I don't really care. That's what my opinion is. I think that, you know, now we see people doing all different types of things. There's the highway bourbon and, you know, whatever. But this Tropics one was actually aged in Singapore. And I heard, you know, Jefferson's was on the Bourbon Lens podcast. And if you don't listen to Bourbon Lens podcast, make sure after you watch this, because you need to watch this video in its entirety. But after you watch this, go subscribe to them. Uh, fantastic podcast. But when they had Jefferson's on there, they you know basically talked about how, yes, they aged it in Singapore, but that kind of opened their eyes to maybe some places within the US, such as Texas, that with that heat and that humidity, maybe there's different places that we could actually use in the country that are going to have a different impact on the whiskey, even though it was distilled in Kentucky or Indiana or wherever it may have been. And I think that they're onto something. And this has made a lot of people's lists. This has been one that's been recommended by people. And I know that people <laughs> overall, Jefferson's can be very polarizing maybe. Um, so if people are recommending this, it must be good. And so I saw it in the store here recently had to buy it. All right, what are friends for? <laughs> Especially friends that uh, live either near Ohio or in Ohio. Uh, Land of the Weller. Apparently, that you, they make it seem like you go to Ohio and it's just raining Weller. I don't think that that's necessarily the case, but I do think it's very findable there. And because of that, I've been able to utilize some relationships in order to get a bottle of this at retail price. So at, at 40 bucks, absolutely sign me up all day long for <laughs> old weller antique owa 107 whatever you want to call it it's it's definitely my favorite weller in the lineup 
I don't think the other ones even come close. Maybe Foolproof comes close. I will say that much. But this one, 40 bucks. I wish that was the case for all of it. But I don't say that to now make you feel like you have to go get this bottle and pay 250 300 I've seen crazy prices on this. I'm definitely not saying that. I'm saying at $40, I love this bottle. <laughs> so uh, I've had it before. You know, obviously one of my favorites. So nothing really surprising here, but just the fact that I was able to find one or a friend of mine was able to find one for me and bring it back for me, that, that's awesome. I'll take it all day long at $40. All right, Jack Daniels. This is the twice barreled special release, their heritage barrel rye. So for those maybe that are just kind of getting into whiskey, Jack Daniels, you may have old number seven stuck in your head as I did when I first got into the game. And a rep from Jack Daniels actually kind of stopped me and just said, have you tried anything else other than old number seven? And I said, no, I didn't. I mean, I knew they had Gentleman Jack, but I didn't really understand the lineup that they had. And at that time, they had the single barrel rye, the single barrel Tennessee whiskey, and the barrel proof. And it, for me to try those at that point, I thought, man, these are amazing. And I had no idea that Jack Daniels, I just had old number seven, that profile in my head, whiskey that I didn't really necessarily care for to drink neat. So that opened my eyes. That would have been about five years ago, six years ago now. But ever since then, to see all the different things they're doing, with, especially with the rise, the, the Koi Hills, the limited releases, but now the Barrel Proof Rye is out and, you know, the Barrel Proof Tennessee Whiskey is, is there and just their single barrel programs and different picks that I've seen. I mean, the, the 10 year, the 12 year, I mean, they, they are absolutely killing it right now and they've got the whiskey to do it and they've got the brand to do it. I mean, I don't know how you could not be a fan of Jack Daniels right now and what they're doing, even if you don't necessarily care for the whiskey. Just what they are doing right now in the game is, is awesome. I love it. And again, the limited release stuff is all fine and dandy, but to put out a bonded, a mash, you know, triple mash, all these different products that are just available as well, that's huge. So I say that to then talk about one that's not necessarily readily available, <laughs> but this is pretty much like a double oaked rye. And so they mature it in their, their new oak barrels. And then from there, mature it in a heritage barrel and so i have a few other of their bottles the heritage bottles from years past um, and i'm just kind of curious how, how the impact is going to be on this with the rye instead of the tennessee whiskey right so with what they've done recently with the the barrel proof rise i'm very excited to see what happens with this bottle now this one itself is only 100 proof but I'm okay with that. I'm not necessarily a proof hound to where I'm not gonna drink it unless it's over 120 or something like that. At 100 proof, if, if they feel like this is the best proof point to get the most in-depth flavors or whatever you wanna call it out of this whiskey, then let's roll with it. Jack Daniels seems to really know what they're doing, obviously. I'm not gonna question them. I can't wait to crack this one open and try it. Last but not least, <laughs> bookers. <laughs> I'm not going to give you the whole spiel again about how they market to you with the box and all the other stuff. And every single time I'm the first one in line to go buy one. Uh, to me, I think that I hear what people say that back in the day, maybe bookers provided a different experience. The price goes up. The whiskey's not as good anymore. I don't know. One, I would say the price has gone up on everything. Um, and people argue the price of bookers, but then I don't know, make other purchases that I feel like then don't justify that first argument you just had. Uh, but either way, this particular one is the 2023 04 batch. This is the Storytellers batch. So for those that may not be familiar, Booker's releases four different batches each year. And I'm a person that has to have all four batches. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I mean, I think that when you start comparing batches and you, you're going to have some that wow you, and I'm always looking for the one that wows me. But overall, it's still a very good whiskey, in my opinion. I know a lot of people have said, like, they just kind of go to Knob Creek and that's all good. But I, I don't like Knob Creek compared to Booker's. I would take a Booker's and pay the extra money. Uh, that's just me. But I know a lot of people that would just take the Knob Creek uh, and go with that with the nine year. Right. So. You know, I don't know, that, but that's just my opinion. 
Booker's wasn't one that I was always a fan of. Originally, I was actually more of a fan of the Baker's line, but probably somewhere, I don't know, when I switched over, maybe 2018, 2019, something like that, I switched over and ended up liking Booker's more. And then Baker's changed to a single barrel, and I've seen some variations with that. I don't think that the profiles are that far off, but again, something about Booker's, I just love it. So this is the 2304 batch again, the Storyteller's batch. I'm always looking for that one. A lot of people seem to really like this one last year. I saw some different reviews, so we'll see. But I will officially review all of these as soon as I can. <laughs> it's a lot. And those that have been following around, along with my journey know that I actually have a newborn right now. So it has been kind of hit or miss. My <laughs> videos that I put out on YouTube have still been consistent. I'm happy about that. But I would love to be able to get more reviews done and be able to provide more reviews to you. And if you're looking for whiskey reviews or just general whiskey content, like I said, make sure you like and subscribe, do all that stuff. And I just appreciate you being here. That's what it boils down to. And I'll see you in the next whiskey video. Cheers.